Okay, so as a companion to our previous video where we describe all rational points on the unit circle, in this video we want to show that there are no rational points on uh, the circle x squared plus y squared equals 7. So let's see how we'll do that. So we'll do that by contradiction. So let's look at the proof. What we're going to do is assume that x naught y naught is in q squared, in other words, those are both rational numbers, such that they're on this curve, in other words, x naught squared plus y naught squared equals 7. Okay, good. Now the next thing that we'll do is since they're rational numbers, we can write x naught y naught equals p over q comma r over q with the same denominator, so we found a common denominator there. Okay, so plugging those representations of x naught and y naught into this equation give us the following. We have p squared plus r squared equals 7q squared. So we get that after clearing the fractions. And so our next thing that we'll do is claim uh, we may assume something about the GCD of these numbers. In fact, we may assume that the GCD of P with Q is the same thing as the GCD of R with Q, which is one. Great, which means that not only uh, can we take these to be in lowest terms, but they're in lowest terms with the same denominator, which will be nice, it'll be a nice simplification. Because right now they're just written with a common denominator. That, that may not be lowest terms until we uh, prove this claim. Okay, good. So, uh, let's suppose that we have a common denominator of P and Q. So that means D divides P and D divides Q. That means we can write P as D times A and Q as D times B. And plugging into this equation gives us uh, d squared a squared plus d squared b squared equals 7q squared. Okay, good. But now notice that tells us the following. That tells us that d squared divides 7q squared because d squared divides the left-hand side, so it also has to divide the right-hand side. Great, but d squared cannot divide 7 because 7 is not a perfect square, 7 is a prime. So that tells us that d squared divides q squared, which tells us that d divides q, which means we could have uh, canceled that from both fractions. So, and then we could do the same thing by taking a common divisor of r and q um, and doing the same kind of thing. So I'll leave it to you to fill in the details, but this is a sketch of why we can assume that these two GCDs are one. Okay, so from here I'll clean up the board and then we'll work towards finishing the proof of this proposition. Okay, so far we've reduced this problem to the following. We want to look at p squared plus r squared equals 7q squared, where the GCD of p and q is 1 and the GCD of r and q is 1. So we're actually not going to look at as this as an integer equation. We're going to reduce this modular 4 and look at the resulting congruence. So reduce mod 4, so that's going to give us the following, p squared plus r squared equals 3 q squared modulo 4. So that's clear because 7 is congruent to 3 mod 4. Now the next thing that we're going to do is look at all possible values of the left hand side of this equation and all possible values of the right hand side of this equation. Okay, so now we'll make two charts for each side of this congruence. So the first one will be for the left-hand side, so we can choose values of P and R, and that's going to give us P squared plus R squared. So let's see what all the possible values are here. So notice we can let P be 0, R be 0, that gives us 0. Great, we can let P be 1, R be 0, that gives us 1. If P is 2 and R is 0, that gives us 2 squared, which is... Uh, 4 which is 0, good. Then if we have 3 and 0, so 3 squared is 9 which is 1, 
Great. Now uh, let's do one with one. So notice one squared plus one squared is two. Now if we do one with two, so one squared. Um, so now if we do two with one, so two squared is four plus one is five, which is one mod four. So now let's do three and one. So three squared is nine plus one is 10, which is two mod four. Great, and now let's do two with two. So notice those are both four, which are both zero mod four, so that gives us zero. We can do two with three. So again, we have four, which is zero, and here we have nine, which is one. And then finally, we have three with three. So those are both nine. So we have nine plus nine, which is 18, which is two mod four. Okay, great. So notice our only possibilities on the left-hand side of the equation are congruence to zero, one, or two mod four. Okay, so now we're gonna make a chart for the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so let's look at Q, and then we'll look at three Q squared. And then over here, let's look at allowed values of P and R based on this choice of Q and this uh, condition that we have up here. Okay, so if we have Q is congruent to uh, zero mod four, then Q, Q squared times three is also zero mod four. But if Q is zero mod four, that makes Q even, which means P and R cannot be 0 mod 4 or 2 mod 4 because those are, those are both even. So that means uh, P and R both have to be 1 or 3 mod 4. And so now if we go over here and we look at all of the outputs where we get zeros, all of the outputs that we get zeros have only disallowed values of P and R. So that actually doesn't give us a solution. Okay, good. So let's look at the next one. So if we have one here, we have uh, three, because three times one squared is three. But now notice, it doesn't even really matter what the allowed values of P and R are in this case, because there's no output um, from the left-hand side of the equation that gives us three. Good. So now let's look at the next one, which is two. Notice two squared is four, which is zero, so this gives us zero. And the fact that Q is congruent to 2 mod 4 means that Q is even again. But again, that tells us that the allowed values of P and R are 1 and 3 again, which tells us that we don't actually get any solutions here because that those correspond to spots on the chart with disallowed values of P and R. Finally, if we look at Q is congruent to 3 mod 4, we get 3 times 3 squared. So notice 3 times 3 squared is 27, but 27 is 3 mod 4. And again, it doesn't matter what P and R are in this case because there's no uh, entry on the left-hand side of the equation that gives us 3 as an output. Okay, good. So this is the end of this example.